everyone, and welcome to this episode of Zenotes Live. Uh, today we'll be going over IGCSE biology with Afrin. So, um, Afrin, do you want to introduce yourself before we get started? Um, hi, uh, my name is Afrin, and I just did my IGCSEs, the Summer 22 series. And uh, I'm excited to do this. I really enjoy bio, so I guess let's get started. Okay. Um, so this is the first chapter, the first part of the first chapter in the syllabus of IGCSE biology. Um, in this part, we're going to be looking at the characteristics of living organisms. Um, so before we start, let's go through the syllabus. This part of the syllabus requires you to uh, define the, the, a few characteristics of living organisms. As we go further, we'll be looking deeper into that. Uh, so there are seven uh, separate characteristics that uh, that makes a living organism a living organism, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, there's a mnemonic for you to memorize the seven characteristics, which is called Mrs. Gren. So the M stands for movement, R stands for respiration, S stands for sensitivity, G stands for growth, R, there's two R's. The second R stands, stands for reproduction, uh, E stands for excretion, and N stands for nutrition. Mrs. Gren. That's easy enough to remember, I hope. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the definitions part of it. Um, as you remember, the first word is movement. And this, this is, these are the seven words that we look at now. You, it's something you have to memorize. And it's, you, it's usually going to come for one or two marks. They might just straight up ask you to write the definition, or they might give you blanks. Um, fill in the blanks type of question where you have to fill in uh, the missing words. Uh, so movement is an action of by an organism or part of an organism that causes a change in its position or place. So if I'm doing this, I'm, I'm um, moving my arms. So it's part of an organism. Or I can walk. So, you know, the whole organism itself is moving. So plants, uh, you might it might not be obvious to the human eye, but plants do move as well. Um, when you we, when we go further into the chapters around chapter uh, eleven, I think you'll be looking at how plants move towards the sun, away from the sun, uh, towards the ground, towards water. So yes, plants also have movement, and there's bacteria and uh, fungi. All of these organisms also have different types of movement. Not always obvious to the human eye. Then there's respiration. Now respiration is key to all living organisms. It's basically what's keeping us alive all the time. Uh, so respiration is the chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrient molecules and release energy for metabolism. So energy is released in the form of ATP. Uh, you don't really need to know uh, the details of that, but that's basically all you need to know. And um, uh, you should know this kind of basics of it. Uh, we need glucose to survive, right? So there's the... Do you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, so we need glucose, we need water, we need oxygen. So all of these uh, nutrients, all these molecules, they react uh, to release energy. The, they break bonds, they make bonds, and the chemical processes that's happening, it releases energy that keeps us alive and gives us energy for breathing, for movement, for uh, transporting nutrients and all that. Uh, and homeostasis, that's an important point, and that's something we will look further into in another chapter. Uh, then there's sensitivity. That's the third characteristic. Uh, sensitivity is the ability to detect and respond to changes in the internal and external environment. Once again, this has a lot to do with uh, homeostasis, and we will look at it uh, deeper. We will look deeper into it in uh, another chapter. But for now, all you need to know is, um, first of all, you need to know the definition. And all that basically means that if something changes in an environment, you have uh, the ability to respond to it. So that's what makes a living organism a living organism. So if uh, th there's a pin that pricks my uh, finger, the tip of my finger, I will um, involuntarily move my finger away. So you're not thinking about it. It's just something that's happening. So it's an automatic, not always automatic, but you, know, you can respond to something that's happening. Uh, next, we have growth. Uh, this I don't know if it requires much of an explanation. It's just permanent increase in size and dry mass. So once you're five and you're 15, 
so you see the change right like you're growing all the time um and it's it's something that once again that makes a living organism a living organism um and then we have uh, oops that okay sorry sorry about that uh, then we have reproduction the process that makes uh, more of the same kind of organism so obviously something that's very important for all living organism is to keep the species alive keep um, the or, um yeah to keep the species alive so for that reproduction is a key um role the key reproduction plays a key role in that and then we have excretion excretion is the removal of uh, waste products of metabolism and substances in excess of requirements um so excretion happens in the form of urine and when you're breathing out so when you're breathing out you're removing carbon dioxide from your body which is poisonous and uh, it can uh, disturb the ph balance in your blood which can cause disturbances in uh, many processes you don't need to know the details of that right now actually for any of these you don't have to know the details because we will look at most of these uh, characteristics in detail when we move further into the syllabus um and then there's nutrition nutrition is the taking in of materials for energy growth and development so you're eating you're breathing um so all of this you're taking in nutrients once again for res uh, respiration to happen in your cells and uh, to acquire some other nutrients to build up proteins and uh, keep you healthy basically and then there's metabolism so metabolism is the sum of all anabolic and catabolic reactions in a cell or a body so this is something you do not need to know in detail about but uh, just know the definition and we will look at anabolic and catabolic reactions a little more into detail later Okay, so that's about it for the first part of chapter one. Now we move on to the second part. So the whole, the topic itself is called characteristic and classification of living organisms. So we're done with characteristics. Now we're in the classification part of it. So uh, it's called concept and uses of classification systems. So let's look at the syllabus here. Um, so we need to know we can we need to be able to state that organisms can be classified into groups and by by their features we need to describe what a species is we need to describe the binomial naming system we need to use dichotomous keys um if you don't know what that is don't worry we'll look at that in a few slides um and then we need to uh describe what causes different organisms to be uh classified into different groups and the, and the what the evolutionary part of it and then we have to ex okay so this part of it is supplement so if you're doing the extended part of the paper um then you learn you're gonna need to know this um we need to know that uh sequences in the base of the dna and then we need to know that some organisms are more closely related to each other than others and we need to know how that can be found out by scientists and doctors okay so here we go um so organisms as you should know can be classified into groups by the features that they share so there was a botanist a swedish botanist called carl linnaeus and he was the first person to classify organisms now classification systems they usually reflect how organisms have evolved over time and what kind of uh, effect or change in the environment has caused the change in the organism itself and there's a common uh, example of the gray moth and the black moth during the industrial revolution not sure if you've heard of it but um basically gray moth used to be more common before the industrial revolution because they easily uh, camouflaged onto the trees and so they were hunted less but then during the in, uh, after the industrial revolution or during the industrial revolution black moss became more prevalent because uh tree barks got darker so the light the gray color lighter moss were easily detected by predators so they were hunted more okay so this is the first part of this is um species you need to describe or define what's a species species is basically a group of organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offsprings um so a horse and a horse reproduce to form uh, to produce a fertile offspring which is once again a horse but then so a horse and a donkey can also reproduce to form to produce a mule but the mule is usually not fertile so i think that's what 
sub- makes a species a species. So it's not always about organisms that can reproduce together. The key criteria here is they reproduce to form a fertile offspring. Um, there are spe- uh, some ways we can, uh, some techniques we can use to classify organisms. Uh, there's morphology, anatomy, and there's DNA. So we'll look at morphology first. Uh, morphology is the overall form and shape of their bodies. So there's wings and legs. So if you see something with a, with wings, okay, birds. You see something with four limbs, okay, it's probably a mammal. You see something with fin and a tail, it's probably a fish, something like that, you know? And then anatomy is a little more detailed. Um, you're going to look at it's the body structure determined by dissection. So not everything with wings is a bird. There are insects with wings. So what differentiates them? And then there are different types of insects and uh, the group of our insects. So anatomy basically goes more into detail. You're going to study the internal part of an organism as well. Um, we're going to look at the DNA part of it later. Um, so next up, we have binomial naming system. So um, you've heard of scientific names, right? So all scientific names are um, determined using a system of naming called the binomial naming system. So it uses two names. Um, and in the, it's, it consists of two names. The first part of it is the genus, and the second part of it is the species. So um, genus and species, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Uh, but it's part of a bigger uh, classification list, which we will look at further into this presentation. Um, so when we're using the binomial naming system, there's there's a set of rules we use to uh, write the names or print the names. Uh, when we're writing the name, the first part, the genus, the first letter has to be capital. And then the following has to be um, small, uh, lowercase. And then the second name, the species, None of the letters are uppercase. They're all lowercase. So there's an example, uh, Homo sapiens. As you can see, the H is capital, and none of the other letters are capital. And then when you're writing it, the name has to be underlined. But when you're printing it, uh, the name must be in italics. And it's just uh, some rules that you need to follow when you're writing the names. And then there's also, you can also shorten the names. So for Homo sapiens, you can write H dot sapiens. So for, um, and there's an example here. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. And that's basically it. This topic usually comes in MCQs. So they'll give you a list of, they'll give you an organism in the question, and they'll give you a list of possible scientific names. And you, you would have to choose it. Right. If this was like a written question, um, would you get marked down for like, let's say, accidentally forgetting the lowercase h for Homo sapiens? Uh, it depends on the question, actually, because if oh, okay. it's uh, identification of an organism, then probably not. But if it's like you have to, if the question is how would you write the name, then yes, they probably would deduct the mark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have dichotomous keys. Um, so this is. Basically, you'll use visible features to classify organisms. So you, you should kind of think about morphology here. You're looking at the overall form of an organism to classify them. Um, and this is, uh, at each step, you'll be given a choice. And depending on the choice, you will be led to another choice or maybe the next organism. So there's an example. I put an example here. Um, the first question is, does this organism has a fur? Has fur? So if it has fur, it goes one way. If it doesn't have fur, it goes another way. If it has fur, then it's definitely a mammal. And if it doesn't have a fur, um, then we go for feather or no feather. If it has feathers, then it's birds. Then it's a bird. And then we go for external or internal fertilization. If it's internal fertilization, there's reptiles. So um, you get the gist of it, right? Um, so the questions for this, this, it's actually exactly how you see it in the picture. They'll give you a list. And the, this could come in MCQs or in the theory paper. That's paper four. Um, they'll give you, in the MCQs, it's going to be, they'll give you uh, a choice. They'll give you a picture. Okay, it could be like A, B, C. And there's a bird, there's a fish, there's a donkey, and there's a, a cockroach, right? And they'll give you a list of uh, questions. Does it have uh, four legs? Does it have wings? Does it have 
antennas. So depending on those questions, you say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. If uh, and then you go to another. Uh, you you keep going to you keep answering the question until you reach the correct choice. And if it's in paper four, that's a theory paper. Um, you're basically going to have to identify, like, or sometimes you'll have to reason why is it that. So if you think they might give you a picture of a panda and they won't say what it is. It, it's not a mammal. It's a, they won't tell you it's a mammal, but uh, you should know it's a mammal, right? And then you have to answer a few dichotomous key questions. It, it has fur. It has four limbs. It has external ears. And depending on that, the, so these are the three reasons. So you can write those three reasons in the um, as your answer. So here's a question um, I put as an example. So this is an MCQ question. The diagram shows a bird that lives near rivers. So usually these questions will have a diagram of the bird or whatever or Yanison they're talking about. And the next part of the question says, use the key to identify the bird shown in the diagram. So the first question is, are the toes joined by a flap of skin or are they separate? So you're going to have to look closely to it and look closely, look at the picture. So um, they are joined by a flap of skin. So then if, you, if it is joined, it says go to question number two, which says, is the beak longer than the head or is it not as long as the head? If it is longer than the head, in which in this case, it is longer than the head, then they say go to question number three. And the question number three says, is the top of the head black or is the top of the head white? Um, and if you, obviously you can see it, uh, the top of the head is black. So the, the answer is option C. Um, it usually they'll give the questions itself is not going to be uh, difficult. You just have to pay attention because uh, I would see why someone would in the first question, why someone would choose A instead of the first option, because it's kind of difficult to see the flaps, uh, the flap of skin. So you have to really pay attention in these type of questions. OK, the DNA part of it, using DNA for classification. Um, so like I said, you can use the sequences of bases in DNA uh, and of amino acids and proteins uh, as a more accurate means of classification. Bases, DNA, sequences, amino acids, all of this you're going to learn further into the syllabus. But for now, you need to know that it's the most accurate way of classification that we know of. And um, so basically, you need to know what is a DNA. DNA is a chemical from which chromosomes are made. And each uh, DNA is made up of, uh, each DNA molecule is made up of strings of smaller molecules. So that's how molecules work. They are made of smaller parts. Um, and DNA contains four bases. Um, oops, I don't think I included that here. But basically, there's A, T, C, and G. OK, so um, you need to know that A always go with, goes with T and C always pairs with base G. Um, that's just how DNA works. And in this, for this, the most common type of question, actually, this is the only type of question we have. Um, they'll give you a list, A, T, C, and G. Maybe it's going to be like A, A, T, T, C, C, G, G. And then they'll ask you, what's the base pairing for this particular molecule? Okay, and so if it's A, you'll know it's going to be T. If it's again A, it's going to be T again, and then it's C, then you'll know it's G. I, I have an example question coming later, um, but basically, yeah, that's the gist of it. And another type of question that there is sometimes they might ask, I think it was in a 2020 paper, um, they'll ask, How likely is it that um, they have a similar, um, they have a they have the same uh, relative, no, wait, the same ancestor, right? Like how how much further back in time do they share a similar, same, the same ancestor? And depending on that, that's how similar an organic is. Um, and that's basically all you need to know for this. Okay, so here's the third part of the first chapter, uh, features of organisms. So you've, you've heard me talk about external ears, fur, limbs, fin, tish, uh, tails, um, internal fertilization, external fertilization. So all of that is coming here. Let's look at the syllabus here. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to learn about the classification list and how it gets more general to more specific. So it kind of goes like this. So that's the first part of it. And then you're going to um, put 
different organisms into different kingdoms. You will learn what's a kingdom. Um, you're going to learn the main uh, features of vertebrates and invertebrates, uh, also known as arthropods, uh, arthropods. And then you're going to use these to um, use whatever you learned so far to classify organisms by looking at them or by reading a description of them. So that, that's basically how the questions are. And then you're going to um, stay, uh, place all the organisms into different kingdoms, like I said already. But <clears throat> in this part, you're going to have to know them in more detail, the five kingdoms act like properly. <clears throat> and then you will, um, oh, yes. And then you're going to classify plants into flowering plants and ferns, and then mo monocots and dicots. Uh, and that's basically it, because the next part is just uh, oh, wait, you also have to know about viruses, but not uh, much in detail in, for the IGCC syllabus. Okay. So like I said, it kind of looks like a funnel. So um, the top part is more general, and it gets more specific as you go lower down. And there's, so let's first look at it. There's kingdom, there's phylum, there's class, order, family, genus, and species. So, um, so far, all that's really, really um, relevant to our syllabus. I mean, you need to know all of them, but um, you're going to have to classify organisms depending on thing, on their kingdom, their phylum, and genus and species. That's basically it. Genus and species we've already covered in the binomial naming system. Um, now we're going to look at the kingdom and phylum part of it. Class, order, and family, uh, it's um, not in the IGCC level, so we're not going to look at that. But you have to know all of this. You have to know them in order. There's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And for you to learn that, there's a mnemonic again. Um, King Philip came over for granny soup. Uh, it's short, uh, kind of tells a story, and I, it just helps me remember. It might help you remember. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so as an example, I put a tiger. So its um, kingdom is animalia animals. So there's animals, plants, uh, uh, phyla, sorry, fungi, prototis, and protista. And there's phylum, chordata, that's, uh, it's some uh, vertebrae, and it's a mammal, it's a carnivore, it's a feline, and then panthera, and tigers. So if you're going to look at the binomial naming system of it, uh, if you're going to look at the scientific name of a tiger, it's going to be Panthera tigris. Does that make sense? Because that's what I talked about now. <laughs> okay, so animals. We're going to look at animals. Uh, oops. Okay, no, forget the title of it. Look at the content. So we're going to look at the five kingdoms, right? There's animals, there's plants, there's fungi, there's prokaryotes, and there's proptosis. Um, so animals are multicellular organisms. Multicellular meaning it has more than one cell, kind of um, the name kind of speaks for itself. And it eats other living organisms. So we are animals. Let's take humans as an example. We eat plants, we, we eat um, chicken, we eat mushrooms. These are all living organisms. But so basically we're eating other living organisms. That's how we get our nutrients. And that's animals. And then there's plants. Plants are also multicellular and they're photosynthetic. So they, uh, and they're autotrophic. So autotrophic meaning they make their own food. And oh, one, and then photosynthetic meaning they use light as an energy source for the process in which they make their own food. So we will look at photosynthesis later in deeper into the syllabus. But for now, that's all you need to know. And, um, Yes, another very important part of it, they have a cell wall made of cellulose. And it, it might come, it might come in paper two, that's the MCQs. It might come in paper four, um, that's the theory paper. They might ask you, okay, is it, if it's MCQ, they might ask you, um, they'll give you a list of cell wall, no cell wall, and cell wall made of cellulose, cell wall not made of cellulose, you know? So basically you have to identify the plant using that. Um, so remember this, plants, they have cell wall made of cellulose, like, just know that, okay? And there's fungi. Fungi could be single-celled or multi multicellular, um, and they feed on other organisms. 
And here's what differentiates them from plants. They have a cell wall not made of cellulose. So plants, cell wall made of cellulose. Fungi, cell wall not made of cellulose. And that's basically it. And they reproduce by spreading of spores in um, specific conditions. Uh, this is something you will learn about in chapter between uh, asexual reproduction. And then they're saprotrophs. So they de feed off dead organisms. Uh, or they're or like they're basically parasites in most cases. Okay, and then there's prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. So there are two types of cells. There's prokaryotes and there's eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are more complex. They're larger, uh, and that's what our cells look like. Okay, but you don't have to know that. You have to know about prokaryotes, and uh, they're single cell organisms like with no nucleus, like bacteria. Again, you look at this um, further into. Uh, with more detail later. And then there's proptosist. Um, they're single cell organisms with a nucleus. So for all of this, um, the last three, all you need to know is the points that's actually given here. So for fungi, you, you need to know how they reproduce, how they feed, and they're, they could be single celled or multicellular. multicellular. And they are, they, have, they are made of, they have cell walls, not made of cellulose. So there's four main points of fungi. And then prokaryotes and proptosis, they're just one, one points each. Uh, prokaryotes have no nucleus and proptosis have a nucleus. That's the difference between those two. Animals and plants, we will look at them into more detail, obviously, further into the syllabus. But for now, yes, this is all you need to know. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look at the phylum. There's vertebrates and there's invertebrates. So first we'll look at vertebrates. There's mammals, reptile, fish, amphibians, and birds. Um, so this you have to know, you have to know the uh, five main invert vertebrates. And then you know the characteristics of each vertebrate. And you don't need to know much, it's just the points that's given here. So for mammals, um, you know, you need to know they usually have fur or hair or skin. They can live on land or in water. The water just like whales and dolphins. And on land, there's us, there's goats, there's cats, there's ducks. Um, and we have four limbs. So, uh, yeah, we do have four limbs. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. Uh, and uh, mammals have lungs to breathe. And uh, mammals give birth to live young. So those are the five main points that you need to know. Um, and then there's reptiles. Reptiles have a scaly skin. They usually have four legs, but there are exceptions like snakes. Um, and they have lungs to breathe and they have hard eggs. Four points, that's all you need to know. <laughs> and there's fish. They have wet scales and they, use, they make use of external fertilization and they give birth to soft eggs. Um, and they have gills for breathing, so they don't have lungs. I'm sure you must have noticed they have the gills uh, and you will look at the circulatory system how they, uh, the gases change and all that a little more into detail um during transport in animals uh yeah that's a, that's further into the syllabus um and then we have amphibians so amphibians have smooth and moist skin and they have external fertilization and soft eggs so that's one point that's similar to fishes uh, amphibians and fishes and they have gills or lungs to breathe so they can live on water and on land um, and they have four legs uh, birds birds have feather on their body and scales on their legs uh, they have two legs and two wings they have lungs to breathe and they have hard eggs uh, hard dry eggs so um, these points are actually quite easy to remember you, um, you know them from your personal observations and uh, also just not that many points. Uh, the questions for this topic will usually come, they'll give you a picture and then they'll ask they'll um, ask you to make some observations about the picture. So does this organism, they'll give the picture of an organism and does this organism have fur, does it have uh, two legs, does it have four limbs, um, is it in water or is it on land? Um, you have to look at some details like are there any uh, young uh, young ones so um um and then do you see any eggs do you see a nest do you see uh and then yeah that's basically it so if they're on land so you have to make the inference that okay so they probably have lungs uh and if they have fur it's probably a mammal if they have wings it's probably a bird 
and that's basically it. And then we look at invertebrates. So there were five vertebrates. There are four invertebrates um, that we need to know about. There's crustaceans, there's arachnids, there's myriapods, and there's insects. Um, like an example of each is given. So crustaceans uh, are like crabs. Uh, so let's look at crustaceans first. They have an exoskeleton. So that's basically a hard calcified shell on top of their body, the outside their body. Uh, think, think of the crabs, okay? And they have one pair of compound eyes. So basically it's, um, there's a difference between compound eyes and simple eyes, but it's not something that you should know in detail. You just need to know that crabs, no, crustaceans have compound eyes, and but one pair of it. Okay, and they need to know that their bodies have two segments, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Actually, a dagger might have been helpful here, but cephalothorax is basically the top part of it. It's when the head and the top, the uh, the lower the part above their abdomen are connected. So they have the cephalothorax and then the abdomen, that's the lower part of their body. Um, and then they have more than four pairs of legs and they have two pairs of antenna, which are sensitive to touch and chemicals. Um, and that allows them to think about sensitivity, think about the seven characteristics that we learned of, sensitivity is one of them. So, you know, you kind of have to make these connections all the time in bio. Um, the next part is arachnids, example spiders. <laughs> Um, so spiders also have two body seg segment, the cephalothorax and the abdomen, two, two parts, the top part and the bottom part, the bottom part is the abdomen, the top part, the head, and the top part connected is called the cephalothorax. Um, you do need to know the word cephalothorax and the abdomen. It, um, sometimes it's usually a keyword in the marking scheme, which could fetch you extra marks, uh, which allows you to access the full range of marks available. Okay. Um, and then there's, they have four pairs of legs, spiders, eight legs, we should look. yeah. And then um, they have a pair of chelicerae. So uh, they hold their prey using these. Uh, and then they have two pedipalps for reproduction. Now these two points, it's not something that you need to know. You need to know that, um, I'm just giving it for extra information, but you need to know they have simple, a uh, simple eyes they have four pairs of legs, and they have two body segments, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Um, and then there's myriapods. So myriapods also has a segmented body, but they have a lot of segments, a hundred, of, a lot. Okay, so you cannot really uh, name each and every one. So we just say segmented body. Um, and then they have one pair of antenna. Uh, note the difference between myriapods and crustaceans. Crustaceans have two pairs of antenna. Myriapods have one pair. Uh, they have more than 70 pairs of legs, uh, one or two pairs on each segment. So uh, think about centipedes, uh, millipedes. Um, their head and the thorax are, okay, the fused head and thorax and segmented. So this is basically a, a segmented abdomen. So basically, you need, there's the, the you should, they still have distinguishable features, but we don't need to know that for the IGC syllabus. You just need to know that they have many segments. It's a segmented body, and there's many segments of it. And they have simple eyes, um, like the erectids. Uh, and then uh, insects. Insects have three body segments, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So, uh, so now you will note a difference between the crustaceans and arachnids and the insects. Crustaceans and arachnids, uh, they, they have cephalothorax and abdomen, but insects have head, thorax, and abdomen. So that's basically what a cephalothorax is. It's when the head and the thorax are um, joined, it's called a cephalothorax. It's, it's not exactly joined, but that's what you need to know for a GCC. You don't need to know what's exactly happening, you just need to know that they have a cephalothorax. And insects have head, thorax, and abdomen. So now there's clear three parts of their um, main body. And then they have three pairs of legs and one pair of antenna, one or two pairs of wings, and compound eyes or simple eyes. Like, depends between the species, but yes, both eyes are available in both type of eyes are commonly seen in insects. Okay. We've looked at animals, now we'll look at plants. Um, there are two types of plants, ferns and flowering plants. Ferns uh, are non-flowering plants, they don't have flowers. Uh, they are plants with roots, stems, and leaves. And they have leaves called fronds. 
Um, it's basically kind of, it looks very frilly uh, and a, there's no um, flowers and they were produced by spores. So there's no, um, there's no uh, sexual reproduction happening here. There's, uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's all you need to know. And there's flowering plants. They have roots, stems, leaves, and flowers. Okay, but the main parts are the roots, stems, and leaves, which is similar with the ferns. And then they produce, reproduce sexually by using, by the means of flowers, seeds, and then their means of uh, pollination. And then the seeds are produced inside the ovary of the flower. Yeah, that's all you need to know for this. Um, this could be in MCQs. This this can, uh, this topic could come in MCQs. It could come in paper four. That's a theory paper. Um, and yeah, yeah. They'll give you if it's in paper four. They might ask you to identify using the using a picture, or they might ask you how do they reproduce or stuff like that. Yeah. And then we have the monocots and the dicots. So um, monocotyledons, the monocots have uh, one cotyledon in their seed. Okay, so you don't need to know the part of the seed. Okay, um, you just need to know the characteristics of the plant produced by monocotyledon seeds. Uh, the seed itself has one cotyledon. The leaves of these plants have parallel veins. So the leaves are usually longer, and the veins run like this. So um, not the typical leaf that we draw right and they have fibrous roots and they produce flowers in parts of trees there's three say you know something like that and there's dicotyledons so they have two cotyledons in their seeds and their veins are net like so this is actually the more traditional type of leaf that we would draw you know it's like this and the leaves kind of the veins kind of branch and the leaves are broader um because of the branch veins and they have tap roots uh, you don't need to know about the fab what exactly is fibrous roots and tap roots. You just need to know that they're there. And the floral, they produce flowers in parts of fours or fives. So um, four, eight, or maybe five, you know? So that's the difference that they produce, uh, the difference that's present. Uh, now there's viruses and bacteria. So like I said, we will look at this uh, further, but now we need to know that viruses and bacteria. So are viruses a living organism? This is a debated topic, but um, as of right now, uh, for IGs, we consider like they are non-living unless there's a host. Host could be an organism that they have infected. Um, and uh, the characteristic of a virus is that it's covered by a protein code uh, and called the antigens. This is something you learn in the immunity chapter. They do not have cell membranes. They do not have cytoplasm. Uh, so this is so these are basically basic cell organelles that they miss uh, that they do not have that's why antibiotics don't work on them so this is another very important question in igcse why do not anti why are antibiotics useless against viruses so they miss they do not have viruses do not have basic cell organelles so they do so antibiotics basically function by disrupting cell functions cell functions which viruses do not have so that's why they do not work against viruses <coughs> now genetic material they have DNA or and RNA, uh, and only a few genes. They're small. Uh, they need to multiply quickly. So that's basically it about viruses. Bacteria. Bacteria, yes, they do have a cell wall. They do have cell membranes. They do have cytoplasm. Because they are a proper cell, they are a living organism. So yes, they, bas they have all the basic cell organelles. Um, but they do not have nucleus. So they have free-floating genetic material and they have plasmids. This is something the, about plasmids you'll learn in um, the last few chapters. And then, but yes, their DNA is free-floating. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, what you need to know about the bacteria. So this question about bacteria, you could get questions in MCQs and paper four. Um, in paper four, they could, uh, they, they could give you a picture of a bacteria. And then they can ask you to give some adaptations that allow it to, um, that makes it a bacteria, bacterial cell. So you could write about, uh, it has a cell wall and it doesn't have a nucleus. That's free flowing DNA, stuff like that. Okay. So these are um, some examples of viruses. Uh, you can, in the second one, the round one, you can see the protein code um, surrounding it. So uh, this is antigens and basically they trigger the production of anti antibody in our body. Um, this is, again, something you learn more in detail in the immunity chapter. 
Okay, so now there's some sample questions. Uh, the, qu the paper itself is mentioned over here in the top. Okay, so there's some yeast, sugar, and water mixed, at, which is mixed in test tube. The diagram shows the test tube at the start and after one hour. Um, so you can see the yeast, you can see the sugar, you can see the water, and you, you don't see much happening here, it's just there. And after one hour, you can see some bubbles, right? So there's, so this question is about the seven characteristics. Oops. <laughs> okay, so what, what, which is the process that causes this change? So MCQs, you should know this, um, top tip, go by the process of elimination. So if it's not this, you, you go through each option and check out which one works and which one doesn't. So is it growth? It can't be growth because they're pointing out the bubbles of gas and the growing the growth doesn't really cause bubbles of gas. And is it reproduction? Not really, because look at the level of the water here. It's not really increasing. So same kind of the same point as part A, bubbles of gas are kind of irrelevant to reproduction. Is it respiration? Yes, it most likely is because bubbles of gas. So carbon dioxide um, gases are being produced because of um, the reactions happening. Um, so yes, okay, you can keep C part point C in as a likely candidate. And sensitivity, um, they are not changing anything. There's no changes in the external environment. There's no changes in the water, in the test tube. So it probably isn't. They said uh, they don't mention anything that could lead to the answer being sensitivity. So yes, the answer is C, it's respiration. Okay, question two. The diagram shows an animal whose name is whose scientific name is Falco peregrinus. To which species does this, the bird belong? Okay, so they said which species? Um, is it is it a bird? Bird isn't a species. Um, is it F. peregrinus? Uh, maybe. Um, and then is it Falco? Falco. Um, if you remember what we studied. The first part is the genus, and the second part is the species. So Falco is the genus. So it doesn't really specify what species it is. So it can't be C, and it can't be D because uh, it's a vertebrate for sure. But that's not the species. So F. peregrinus is obviously the answer. So the answer is B. Okay. Um, which diagram shows a flower from a monocotyledon? So if you remember, they produce um, flowers in groups of threes. So Option A has five flowers. Option B has five flowers. Option C has five flowers. Option D has six flowers. So that's group of three, six. But if you don't remember the point itself, you can look at which one is the odd one out. So they all have five, and this one has six. So it's most likely to be the odd one out. You know what I mean? So yes, the answer is six. OK. Uh, and then what is the correct order of arthropod group uh, from those with the most legs to those with the fewest things so you over here you can group the not likely and the likely ones so arachnids have four pairs of legs as we've discussed and myoprods have more than 70 pairs of legs <clears throat> so it's, it can't be a or b it could be c or d and then um and then we go on from there so crustaceans and insects insects have uh three pairs of legs crustaceans have um wait so basically you have to move in order so if you 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 could skip the middle part and move to the end of it <clears throat> so we know that crustaceans have more pair, uh, fewer pairs of legs than insects as we've discussed so it, that's basically how you move so the answer is d and that's basically it yeah we're done with chapter one yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for that presentation. Um, it seems like bio is a lot is really content intensive, and you need to memorize a lot of things. Yeah, it is. It is. You have to memorize a lot. So that's why we have a lot of mnemon mnemonics that help us memorize some stuff. Right. Right. So um, thank you for watching this episode of um, C Notes Live. Um, for um, next. Next episode with Afrin, um, we'll be going over uh, what will be what will you be uh, going over? Uh, we'll be looking at cell structures and organelles. We've already talked about organelles a bit here, but in the next chapter, we'll be looking at more into detail. And that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed, um, and 
yeah, see you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>